Welcome to Knock 'em Dead, a comedy podcast that deals with the one thing we all experience yet never talk about death. Episode 10 Cancer. Cancer, the Chernobyl of disease. Several years ago, my mom got cancer, and I begged to be her full time caregiver because I love my mom and to prove I'm better than my sister. My mom had stage four pancreatic, and you know stage four is bad because in the cancer handbook of liveliness, there is no stage five. Stage three, your liver tickles. Stage four, your family measures your flat screen for the new villa they're buying with your life insurance policy that they took out right after they canceled your jelly of the month club. And I do mean last Christmas. We immediately learn that only 0.000013% of people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and 0.000000% of those people know what a pancreas is. One minute we were in Scotland celebrating New Year's, drinking an entire bottle of Macallan 21 before going out. The next, we're checking into a North Carolina hotel by the hospital, telling the desk clerk that what brings us to Durham is a tumor. We laughed. She didn't. See, we knew it was serious when my mom couldn't drink good champagne on that New Year's Eve. Because honestly, I've watched this woman lick it off a dinner plate at my brother's graduation party because she spilled it when she was cha-cha-chaing to church hymns in the kitchen. She was not Amazing Grace. The first doctor told her she was going to die, and she boldly said, I'm going to fight this, and I'm going to win. I am not going to die. And then he told her she would start chemo, and her hair would fall out, and she said, Oh my God, I'm going to die. So chemo does make your hair fall out. My mom wouldn't shave, so she's walking around the house with little tiny puffs of hair flying off her head. At this point, she's a human dandelion. My brother, not the sensitive type, said, I'll be right back. I'm going to throw her in my truck, hit the 101, and roll the windows down. So if you knew that almost one in every two people in the U.S. will get cancer in their lifetime, would you do anything differently? I'm Rachel Bradley with my co-host, Christopher Titus. This is Knock em Dead. Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to Knock 'em Dead podcast. Yes. I don't know what episode this this is. This is many. Keep, I keep saying episodes. four, and you're like, we've done nine. Yes, I go, Have I we think done nine? It's like right in the niner area. Niner seven. Uh, I'm Rachel Bradley, my co-host Christopher Titus. Hello, everybody. And we have a special, very, very special <laughs> guest today. His name is Andrew J. Episode Rivers. Four and a half. <laughs> this one won't get released. Yeah, but, uh... yeah the hidden files. Andrew Rivers. Uh, you can also hear him on the Titus podcast this week. He is a comedian. We True started facts, around yeah. the same time. Yeah. We both uh, came up under the tutelage of... Which is why we're both so successful. <laughs> <laughs> and doing, still doing podcasts this many years in. Yes. Still hoping someday for an agent and maybe... A decent gig. I've got one. He just doesn't <laughs> respond to my emails, so I'm halfway there. Or, oh wow, that's pretty good. Mine, mine stole from me. Oh, money, wow. money. Not if jokes. I had money, mine might have stolen. <laughs> he but. probably stole jokes too. I didn't tutelage you guys on uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, business on, side. And on the business side. Right? Well, you just said it's your all fucked. And then you're like, good luck. I said, look at that. I got fucked. Yeah. You guys, it's gonna have me yeah. too. Yeah. Work on your jokes. That's all I said. We've learned. Yeah. We've learned the hard way. Um, so today we realize we haven't specifically talked about cancer this episode is about cancer specifically andrew has personal family experience with that uh that we found out about as we would meet on the road your father was diagnosed with cancer last year yeah two and a half years ago it was january 2021 he's about two years post-surgery is esophageal cancer stage three so they just cut out your esophagus basically and stretch your stomach up and so uh now he talks like this yeah yeah. (laughs) his Um, father was on the radio for many many years in the radio hall of fame yes but he walks like he's in the nfl hall of fame so (laughs) just a little (laughs) your dad's awesome (laughs) he's great (laughs) your dad very helpful in my career by the way his dad yeah he's in the seattle area yeah he was he would sell out the neptune for us yes he would um 
Wish you'd do that for me. Would you say <laughs> he doesn't like you no. as much? <laughs> would you say that you are closer to your dad than your mom? Yeah, although in a weird way, this experience has helped me bond with my mother more. Yeah. Um, I'm a clone of my father in a lot yes. of like mannerisms and, and facial structure. And, Show business. And, yeah. So yeah, even way, how you act. Yeah. Immature. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. so, but during, in November, we took a trip to Hawaii for Thanksgiving and my dad was kind of bedridden for most of the trip even. It's past November? Yeah. Wow. And so like. There was no one to hang out with except my mom, so like we just went on. <laughs> Might, as well. I, you know, I went Might as well. Might as well. I'll hang out with You're mom if everyone else Might is dying. Well. <laughs> yes, so. I hope your mom doesn't Can watch I, this. So I think this one. I mean, cancer. I get cancer is the thing, but but I, I had. I was trying to relate it to Andrew. So Andrew's going through something. When you find out someone with mom too. When you find out someone has this, all this stuff rushes towards you. My dad, after his third heart attack, his first two heart attacks, I'm like, he's just he'll fly, be fine. Mm -hmm. Third heart attack, I realized, oh this guy is going to die. And I think when you, th that's the hard part. Look, we've been dealing with this, this show, everybody at post death. Now, what happens when you get this? Cause it, I don't care who you are. You never believe it's going to happen. Right. You never believe that someone you love this much is going to, you're going to have to face it's this. It's surreal. It because is. Because it's literally your body turning on you. I've had a couple of cancer scares in the last two years and I've had surgery for both. And you do feel like this isn't how this is supposed to, after everything yeah. I've done for you. <laughs> yeah. I do green juice. So I do. do. Yeah. Um, so check this out. In 2024, this is according to the- um, oh, I thought that was a dog. That's on. National Titus Cancer Institute. Um, an estimated 2,001,140 new cases of cancer will be diagnosed. Just new cases in the US alone. And 611,720 7, 611, people will die from the disease that's insane how many people are going to die out of the two million that this is us only Ugh. and this is new cases over two million new cases six hundred and eleven thousand seven hundred and twenty people the percentage seems better though <laughs> I, I i mean two million got it and only six hundred thousand died of it Okay, then it's, well, it's, it's, half. it's yeah. creeping. It's creeping. It's creeping. I believe it's, I, I think it's uh, one in three wow. people will die, get and die of cancer in their lifetime, which is always like yeah. weird I, when you're I sitting with three people. Like it's like, <laughs> I had a joke years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I had a joke years ago. Where, like, cause remember there was a whole thing where like, uh, 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 stevia causes cancer. All these things cause cancer, every kind of thing. And I thought, Maybe we just die of cancer. Yeah. Maybe that's just what happens. <laughs> maybe maybe it's not that it causes it. We yeah. got rid of bobcats. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And fire Human beings and, die and of cancer. And that's and how it goes. It just eventually your body turns on you. Yeah. I remember with my dad, um, <laughs> like the heart attack link, uh, like it's facing death is I is with someone you love. And when it's not your death, it's really weird because there's we don't talk about it. There's my dad did not want to talk about it. Did not want to face it. Didn't want to deal with it. And. I would. I'd be like, no, what do you want done? What do you, you know? And, and you I were sorry I, you asked that. Yeah. But it's the heart. Yeah. It's the, yeah. I don't want to, I want to be, 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 I want to be cremated. I want you to take the ashes. I want you to put them in a douche bottle. I want you to find a hooker and run me through one more time. Run me through. Run oh, me Dad. through. Good night, that son. He actually said, he, he thought, I thought it was exaggerating. No, 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 no. It was in one of my specials. He, he, literally out loud he doesn't watch your he would tell i know he says he doesn't <laughs> it's been so long you know he, There's uh, so many. he 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 actually said that he and so i remember some people can't deal with it but i think i i think that it's best to have okay something happens your dad you and your dad mm -hmm. all right so you and your dad had this happen did you sit down and have a sit down with him about what possibly could happen? Did he sit down and go look? How this did they tell you? They, my brother and I happened to be visiting, and I had a show that night, and my oh, parents Facetimed me, and they were sitting on the couch, very serious, and we we're like, "Well, that's a weird thing," and we just happened to be next to each other, so we sat down, and he said, oh, "I just got this diagnosis," and. So, you know, these are the survival rates. This is what is, you know, it was very matter of fact. Yeah. And my mom started crying 
And uh, we were both like, we're fine, you know. <laughs> that's and then an I had to go do a show that night where I'm like, oh, no. That's know? an interesting thing. Like, dads are like that. All right. So I got, like, yeah. so I, it's 35% survivor. <laughs> yeah. They're going to take this much of my esophagus <laughs> yeah. out. I may talk different. Don't worry. Everything's going to be. And mom, like, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, oh, we're going to do it. It's, it's such a weird thing. I love that. I Men are like that. Yeah. So she's been strong. I mean, she's had to you know, take care of them at different times and stuff. And so, um, it's been amazing to watch. Like I said, we've kind of bonded more because he's been unavailable to talk, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, just going through her emotions. Berbiglia had a great line in his last special about his father having a stroke. And he was like, you stop seeing him as your hero and as like a parent or like a, and more of like, Oh, just a human with like emotions, you know? Yeah. And so like, you know, my dad tripped at the airport once and we were, you know, we, uh, he was in line for Southwest, which doesn't do assigned seating, you know? Right, right. Oh, and we know. And we, we, they go, hey, old people and people with dumb babies, you board first. And so I look at him and he's like, no, oh, they won't let me sit in the exit row if they find out I'm disabled, you know? Oh. And so you're like, oh my gosh, this guy's still. <laughs> he's still running the yeah, scam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need that leg room. I'm like, I know it's a Boeing and the door will fly off on its yeah, own, but you yeah. should be safe. But then he like. He trips and then he gets up and he's like, you know, the best part about falling sideways is your head hits last. And I'm like, okay, well, wow. Someone belongs in concussion protocol. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, like that's a CTE response. Yeah, <laughs> we, but that's what you know, being raised by another comedian isn't because we don't deal with humor. We deal with trauma with yep. humor, and right, my dad. It's not that effective, but it's fun. My mom and I made everybody uncomfortable around us. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how we got through it. Mm -hmm. And she would be laughing hysterically in the. ICU or in yeah. the room getting ready to be taken back for surgery, I'd have her laughing and people would always get so weird because they think you need to be so reverent right. about it. Right. And, and, I, and I don't think that's, I don't think in my experience of people that are sick, uh, even the people that are terminal, I find as with, I find with anybody, bring, say what is, say what is, let's get through what is, mm -hmm. and then the relationship and, uh, it blossoms on the other side. Well, the thing was, my mom was living in a nightmare inside True. of her own head, mm -hmm. you know, because they are facing death, and mm -hmm. she's facing not being there for me or for her grandkids, or it's a big deal. So the people that don't give her the respect of acknowledging that's happening right she really didn't have a lot of time for you know she, she needed somebody yeah, to get to in the be shit realistic with her. And yeah. Go, yeah so what happened with your dad he had surgery first or? no he did chemotherapy they did like six months of chemo Ugh. to see if they could get rid of anything and and before they kick it kick it out chemo is like a massage it's yeah, such a it's night so, you it's know so it's um, not painful it's... well like cancer is part of you and so chemo is like we'll just kill you and hope it gets the cancer <laughs> yeah, first. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ex exactly i'm not a doctor right, but... we're also going to try to kill you <laughs> yeah. but hopefully we'll yeah. kill the cancer yeah. before you die i mean i've never played quarterback so i don't know the medical <laughs> um but um but yeah so it's been it's been interesting. They say like five years post surgery, you're a unicorn for survival. So he's at two ish. And so we're kind of like, I, I keep saying to him, like, I don't think anything inside of him will kill him before five years, but I think he's going to trip or something <laughs> just because he's a little wobbly, you know, and he's a little proud to like use the cane all the time yeah. or like, um, my mom was the same yeah. way. And didn't so want to seem weak. I didn't keep telling want me him, to like, do it. You know, they're going to put you down like a racehorse. If you break your hip, they can't <laughs> fix you. Yeah. And it's the hip you got to watch yeah, for so, when you're older. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been crazy, but it, and again, when the diagnosis happened, we were kind of like, okay. And I had been trying so hard for at least a couple of years to be like, live in the moment. I found this guy, Gary V, and he's sort of a, he's sort of like a, uh, he hates the term motivational speaker, but he talks about like, every day you wake up that the six people you care about the most are alive is a good day. And so I tried to have that mentality. And why, then, why six? It's a weird well, number. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, a just random pick a random number. number. <laughs> most people don't have more than three friends. But I was going to say, say, I don't care yeah, about six yeah, people. Like me, as long as my dogs are wow, alive, yeah, I'm okay, good. Okay, yeah, okay. I just tried to hit four. I <laughs> really hard. just tried to hit That's four. That's hard. And so, yeah, in the moment, you're like, I was like, okay, I've been ready for this kind of, but then you're still not ready. No. And then, and then when, when it happened, we were kind of like, okay, well, now we're going to really appreciate every time. I'm going to answer the call every time. I'm not going to hit snooze. And <laughs> and then, 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 then you look and you blink and it's fucking been two years and you're going yeah. like, holy shit, this time is still not enough. Yeah. And, 
can you look up something for because uh, we're doing cancer? Can you look up chemo survival rates? Because um, I, I read something that chemo is like ninety eight percent it doesn't work, and that's two yeah. percent. So, and so that's what we were talking about. This, he's in all these support groups, and some people are like, "Oh, I jog eight miles a day, and I do fine. I, eat, I only yeah. eat. I eat green. <laughs> I, I, I am. I'm a vegan. Yeah. And, uh, we had a friend of ours, uh, Lourdes. She she got it, and she went down. She because when they test you for cancer they shoot you full of sugar yeah to get the cancer light up well the sugar feeds the cancer yeah so what it does is it it, it, it brought her cancer back so she ended up going pure vegan pure vegetarian and not, nothing she would like it and, and then she went to mexico and they did a treatment on her and she came back and she's cancer free yeah but no one comes back and tells you what the treatment in Mexico is. I'm not saying go to Mexico. That's <laughs> where Titus got his dental work done. It's perfect, uh, motherfucker. One year. So here's one study. Um, pa patients who receive chemo have better overall sur survival rates than those who had no. Uh, within one year, 52% versus 9.5. Two wow. years, 36.7 versus 1.5. Um, and then, so the median is 13.17 years versus 5.4 months. So if you don't get, so if you have do chemo, you live 13 years. If you do, if you do, if you don't do chemo, you live a month and a half, nine months. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I just want to hear the percentages. Sounds good. Sounds like a lot of pain, but, <laughs> yes. but then again, it is brutal, but I will yeah. you know, saying to Andrew earlier, my mom couldn't tolerate chemo anymore mm -hmm. and it was keeping her alive and we know that because she stopped taking it and we went vegan and went to Ojai and she felt a thousand times better she was my mom again mm -hmm. she had energy she had color she was walking to the juice place when we got back laughing she could she stayed at our house for a halloween party until midnight on chemo they can't, people can't do that and then cancer came back and it was over i mean and it was that chemo that was keeping her alive but she was miserable the other hand your dad's on an immunotherapy my dad's doing and it's and it's gone it's i gone. forget my dad has cancer because <laughs> wow he's <laughs> he it's because he's had it yeah. and he's he's my sister said he's like a cockroach <laughs> you just can't kill him uh my dad has i remember thinking when your family parkinson's was perfect. he has a uh, cancer it was originally melanoma that spread to his lungs he has a back surgery that went bad, so he's bent over all the way. But he was a Marine, so he's he's still hanging on. He's still working outside every day. He came day. out and I stayed with us. He this. just flew out here last month. Wow. Yeah. Um, but he started doing immunotherapy. They removed part of his lung, and he's been doing immunotherapy once a month, and he's in remission. He's fine. Killer. That's why I forget. Yeah. Maybe don't say killer. Yeah, <laughs> well, killer. That would be the best word. Awesome. I thought it was the name of the podcast. Yeah. Super sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, don't they have a thing in the Marines where they're like, it doesn't matter why you're in this situation, it just now what do you do? Keep going Yeah, forward. so that's what I think about, too, where it's like, Cause sometimes they, they, my mom would be like, it's all the goddamn cheese that he used to eat. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know? So she's just like, so yeah. I like that. I but but, but why, why go back to the past? Hey, uh, yeah. the cheese that's are in the past, yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then she'll like come home and be like, I bought ice cream bars. And you're like, what are you doing? You're killing us. Are you know? cheese is bad? I'm going to have to. I don't think, I that. love cheese. I hope not. So Extra I love cheese. Toasty? I remember I, I, so when, when, when mom got it, I, I remember doing all this research and sugar and stuff. And I was, I became, I I became a real asshole about that what she ate and stuff you know mm -hmm. and i think at one point with people with people who are, are really sick i think at one point you have to go let them be what they're going to be give mm -hmm. them the information but i was kind of a dickhead about it i was very me about it i was very like, no get from god damn it and uh they and got in a big fight about it one time and my mom never wanted to back down picked up her chemo pump off her arm and threw it. She was so mad. And he was like, whoa, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yeah. attached yeah. to her. Like, <laughs> she she was like, yeah. So, so I would say this, man, if I, 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 you have to talk about it, you mm -hmm. have to talk about mm -hmm. it. Do not let, uh, cause we have to get through it. There's a, there's a, there's this weird ominous dark cloud when someone ha is going to get like after my dad's heart attacks, it, there was, it was, it was looming dude. It's your fucking Indiana Jones. The ball's mm -hmm. going to roll over you. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Get through it, talk about it, because all that's left on the other side is a loving relationship. Mm -hmm. And did you and your dad, like your dad just said it, because even, even uh, I say men are good at talking about it, but you're, it's the opposite. Your mom cried. Your mom was good mm -hmm. at it. Your mm -hmm. dad was like, hey, here's a survival yeah, race. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, it is, yeah. it is hard. He's like, ah! 
yeah, yeah. So, I ran, we ran into you in Tacoma yeah. not long after, yeah. and you were pretty wrecked. Yeah. You were yeah. not good. Nope. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that nope. could have just been any day, but yeah. That's true. Well, um, it's interesting you bring up the sugar thing because of the his stomach is tiny now, so he has to eat junk food kind of like doctor's orders was like eat ice cream to fatten up a little bit because he he'll just lose weight because he can't eat huge he has to have like six tiny meals a day oh, or yeah. something like right. that and so um <clears throat> it's uh I, I don't think he can put the cheese it's down yet but oh, um okay. i don't know you know it's um you know, talking about it on stage has helped a lot because when other people laugh at the stuff, yeah. I go like, oh, I'm not crazy. And yeah. these are real emotions. Because I do think about like, I have like 20 minutes on it right now. And I get to the end of that chunk and you're like, they were with me the whole time. Yeah. And that's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, I, I'm like, what's now wrong with this audience? Now let's talk about my penis. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, here, back to blowjob jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've never had a so job. never, never, <laughs> never. So... But but that's what I I get through it a lot with stuff by talking about it on the stage yeah. because you're dealing with the absurdity of it. But the, but the reality of it is like with my dad, mm -hmm. and I didn't get it till he was gone. Uh, but I never I he, God he was such an energetic human being. I never thought I thought yeah he's had six heart attacks. He's gonna have ten more and it'll be fine. Yeah. And then he had you know he had that last one and it, and it killed him. And he it's interesting the way he dealt with it. He never wanted to talk. I couldn't talk to him about yeah. it. I, I mean, I could mom talked about it, right? He didn't want to face it. Some people don't, you know, like, um, well, that's the hard thing though. That's, that's the thing you have to deal with. He likes researching. He's like a nerd. So he'll like go spend six hours on the internet and come back to us with all of his findings and stuff. And, but we don't have like a lot of like detailed it's, we communicate in grunts a lot. We're like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh -huh. my mom and I have a lot of long talks and go and she'll go fill out this paperwork. This is what happens when we die. And I'm like, I don't want to look at this <laughs> stuff. You know, yeah, but that, see, but it's weird. Some people have this thing like, okay, and, and I don't have this, mm -hmm. never had this deal with the death thing. You know mm -hmm. why? Because it's going to happen. Right. There's no, you can't go, I, I can't want to, right. because I'm going to jinx it. You're going to die faster. Right. I could walk out of here and get killed today. And so, like, we went and got our trust done. I'm praying we, for it. We, mm, <laughs> You're not in the truck. <laughs> <You're not laughs> <in> the, <laughs> um, um, but there's, there's like, a, a, there's a peace of mind that comes with dealing with it mm -hmm. before it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also, and let's just talk about the, the logistics of it. I if think you, it, people think it makes it real or something. Yeah, but but it's real anyway. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. it, My so, mom wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't make plans or or assign where things went or who right. got what. They had a trust, but her page was blank. But there's like a jinx of it. Like people think, oh, I don't want to jinx it. Well, you, you already have cancer. My let's dad, just, let's get this I've handled. just told you what's going on with yeah. my father. Parkinson's yeah. is degenerative yeah. as well. He's 82 this year. And he, when he was here, I've been on him for 10 years. He, when he was here, he was like, oh, got to get that trust done one of these <laughs> days. And I'm like, you still haven't done it? Well, no, don't. Mm -hmm. don't have to. I'm but, like, what are you doing? But we have to inform people. Here's guys, if you don't handle the trust, here's what happens. That person, everything that person owns, if you don't handle it, Prince, Prince is a or perfect will example. Whatever. Will, whatever. If you don't deal with it, what ends up happening is all your shit is tied up for years. Yeah years everybody can come after you know the okay. asshole that asshole relative that you don't want the, don't, the yes, motherfucker doesn't get a fucking do. thing <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so those people so those people come in and go well he loved me for mm -hmm. this and like everybody i, I oh, always that happened that's happened a lot in, yeah. in some of my history you know where yeah. people showed up and said he wanted me to have this this and this and she wanted me to have that and we're like you haven't talked to her in four years, but okay. Yeah. Did you have any weird family stuff? But who got the weirdest when they, you found out your dad had this? Who got this? Because there's always someone got weird. By the way, this podcast isn't out. No one's ever uh, No, I mean, I don't think um, everyone was like bending over backwards. I mean, everyone loved my dad. He was like yeah. the fun uh, guy. So like no one was like, normal, there was like well weird adjusted. that was like people are coming out of the woodwork that haven't showed yeah. up a lot. And But I understood like, People want to hang out with him when they are faced with it. And like my brother would be like 
you know, he was going to fly out and join us for Hawaii, but he was like, well, I know I overpower. Sometimes I wanted you to have your time. I'm like, you're, is your dad too? You're allowed to hang out that with him. That was his excuse. Yeah, he didn't I think so. Go. Maybe. So. <laughs> don't want to overpower you. Yeah. I don't, him? Uh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's uh, loud. Take over. Yeah. So, um, no one's been crazy that I know of, but I mean, you know, it's, and plus he's a public figure. So a lot of, I get a lot of sweet messages and. He's like not wanting to do his podcast because he doesn't feel great all the time. And I'm like, talk about it. Talk, you know, yeah. you inspire people with talking yeah. about it because everyone's dealing with something, you know, whether it's like a, a bad hip or, uh, yeah. you know. So this was Bob Rivers, Radio yes. Hall of Fame. Uh, he was on what What was his What was the Seattle? Show? Uh, the Bob Rivers show. And it was on like KSW and KZOK. Was he drive time evening? Drive morning, time? morning, morning, drive. six to ten. Good crew, fun crew. I yeah. yeah, they had fun crew. Killer show. Now he has a podcast. Yeah. In the meantime, though, he tried to take up a life of maple syrup yes. farming. Well, he something. retired from <laughs> radio and he just wanted to get away from everything. So he mm. moved to the woods in Vermont and mm -hmm. and um he uh he had pet bees and uh <laughs> he was making homemade honey and maple mm -hmm. syrup and he just was like Wanted to be somewhere where no one knew who he was. Yeah. And like, he like built a little charity thing in town. And my mom was like, stop giving away all your money, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so, um, but yeah, he was just wanted it to during that, that he got cancer. Well, is an interesting, he was on, his brother died from the same kind of cancer. Oh, wow. So he was on a watch list where he was getting scans every year. Uh, and then you can't make this up. Literally 2019, he went to the doctor and they said, you're never going to get cancer. You've been coming in here for 10 years. So uh, you can literally just make it five years until your next appointment instead of every year. And then he was still going to go in every year, but COVID happened and it was like, stay home. Yeah. And he has Lyme disease, which is like a big unknown thing that no mm -hmm. one knows what could happen. So he was very cautious about going anywhere. And so he just didn't go in for regular appointments. And, and then he started... He started feeling, you know, something here and he was like, this is what I noticed too, is like young people are like, I'm so sorry. And old people are like, what were his symptoms? Yeah, I want to know. know. I'm like, like <laughs> go on. And yeah. 40 year olds are like, you think this beam will hold? <laughs> but so he was like, um, he, he like kept thinking something's wrong with his heart and like going, cause he was like, surely the esophagus pressure? is the last, yeah, it's like a pressure thing. Yeah. Even though my brother had it. Yeah. But why me? So his brother died from Bro this. Yeah, brother oh, died wow. from it. And his brother was like, still smoking and like doing bad stuff while he had he Did went your into dad remission smoke years ago mm, maybe a little bit my dad loved cocaine thing. so uh, um, yeah but he grew up in that day he was like yeah it was back when time. it was cool you was know? he swallowing cocaine <laughs> i don't know no <laughs> that might be the problem I, he was it doing all, it wrong. if you snort it it still goes down <laughs> it still goes down <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's funny <laughs> it's still the same pipe. Yeah, it's the pipe. Yeah, it's just a different <laughs> it, 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 but yeah and then he finally went to get a scan and they were like well this is you know so from literally 2018 or 2019 to 2021 it became stage three it just wow. grew incredibly fast and so then he moved to vegas because he was like i guess i better go somewhere with electricity <laughs> right. and, uh, <laughs> less maple syrup yeah, more electricity yeah. I didn't think of Vegas as like a hospital town, but I guess it's like pretty. It's pretty good. I love that he went. It's a lot of old people. Yeah. That he went from Vermont <laughs> yeah. woods to Vegas. Everyone loves socialism until it's time to die. And yeah, then, exactly. Right. Like taxes. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then he. Um... Wrong podcast. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and so, yeah. And uh, I mean, definitely if I had a rash, I would go to Vegas. Like there's a specialist. <laughs> but. Um... Really, Vegas has great medical. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. And so. He got his surgery old, in old Seattle because uh, he was a celebrity in Seattle. So you get a little um, finding a good cancer doctor is really hard, I guess, because it's like you could have stopped at finding a good. Yeah, cancer well, doctor. that's true. I mean, you don't want the doctor who's like, I got plenty of space. Exactly. Yeah, just had a cancellation. Right. It is <laughs> not a. It is not a. It's like finding university. You got to send a letter and but get it's a referral. Not, it's not even that. It's like like it is still so unknown. If they're still in chemo, when did chemo start? When did they start using chemo in the forties, fifties? They still don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. Like so, so it, it you know, and when Biden was running with the Obama administration, he said, "All right, we're going to do the the, with the cancer moonshot." Mm -hmm. eh, we, just, we haven't got off the launch pad yet. We still don't. And, and and people keep saying there's no breakthroughs, but I've been hearing that my whole life. So what is going on 
that with all the resources we have in America, all the resources we have worldwide, we can't figure well, this out. Well, there's a whole theory. There's a conspiracy theory about that. Is that Keep them sick. Because that, do you know the billions and billions and billions of dollars yep. of industry cancer? My AIDS is acting up, Chris Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so, Can't come into work. My AIDS um, is acting up. The first attempts began in the early 20th, 20th century. That doesn't sound good. Uh, but the <laughs> during actual. The Nick, <laughs> during the time of the yeah, Nick series. The first real use where they saw results was in the 1940s. Okay, so we so we've been doing this for eighty years now, and we haven't we still don't have something better. So that means that. But I agree with her. She said, you know, we we, we, the uh, CTCA, she was CTCA, and I remember they were so inept. She does a bit about her new show, the inept, fucking inept. They almost killed my mom. They almost killed her, and and you just go. And that's what that's where the C minus thing. All doctors need a C minus. So, (laughs) so, so people. That's what I'm saying is like. Don't be afraid to talk. Like if someone's has as an illness, it could kill them. Do not blow that off. Mm-hmm. You know. Speaking of that, I have to go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> like I have to get checked out. I, uh, I've got three. Multiple. Yeah, I gotta what go. You, I gotta, you gotta have the old. Yeah, the old the polyps. And then I'm doing the old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes the citrus juice uh, i gotta yeah. i gotta have my uh heart checked yeah but you gotta get it you gotta keep check getting get checked out yeah. well i just did something interesting because my mom years ago had breast cancer and we didn't have a family history and then my mom got and passed from pancreatic which we have no family history of and there is a genetic mutation that if you have two or more of these four cancers you could have this mutation and so one of her last things that she asked me to do was um you know protect the jewelry from my sister and no i'm kidding (laughs) and (laughs) get genetic testing and so i did it and I just did it again to make sure that one was right. Uh-huh. And I do not have the genetic mutation. Had I tested, and this is why this is important, is um, and the company is Invite, is because of what you said, that they ask a million questions, the genetic, whatever she is, mm-hmm. doctor, something. Um, and based on my family history, it spits out this percentage and then they do the testing. They look at the mutations. If you have the mutations, then you now have orders for genetic, I mean, for screenings for that specific type of cancer. Every six months. Pancreatic, they never find it until stage four almost mm-hmm. because it's n- asymptomatic right. until then. Wow. If I had that mutation, I would be getting <laughs> the scan. I would be getting scans every year, she said. She said, as it stands, once I am. I think 55 or older, they would start recommending it every five years. But she said, I, now I saw a thing with Olivia Munn and she got tested. She got a mammogram. She got all these things. Yeah. And they said, you're fine. But then their percentage thing still said 34%. Mine, yeah, mine's And then 46. she got an MRI and then they found breast cancer in her. So that's the thing yeah. is that so it's it like doesn't. You can get 80 totally. tests and they can still be but like, you're, you're just, totally good. Yeah. You just you're backed up again. Totally. Get cancer. You just totally backed up again. That C minus. These fucking guys don't know. How do you not? No, and doctors have this arrogance to the, the well, it's arrogance. An imperfect, imperfect science, probably. Well, my doctor said well, that she said. Well, really, so this, they don't understand this cells. This would not include uh, environmental or lifestyle choices. And then they or also they, they say one. lifestyle choices. I know, That's I how they like, say it. <laughs> what, I, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Someone's been hitting the vein. Why, why are you looking at me like that? Yeah. <laughs> But environmental, my mom was in the Middle East, and I believe that because when Saddam burned off all those oil fields, she She moved over there and she started having really bad respiratory infections, chronic infections, chronic sinus infections. And it was every year she'd come home, she'd be sick. It was just, and now I know, oh, chronic inflammation, that's a problem. You should see a doctor. I wonder if they can, I wonder if you, I wonder if they, if anyone's done a study on Kuwait cancer rates since then. I know that there was a movie that came out that my stepfather, who was an army colonel, where they tracked nine military men that were on this team that went over there and they had all at that point died of colon or one other type of, I believe colon or pancreatic. Bringing all that ash, all that oil ash. It's the same with the uh, burn pits. Oh God, man. You know, it's like- It's amazing what the people in power will put the rest of us fucking- Power is the worst through. drug the of all, right? Yeah, yeah. We're the, we just put the pawns through. No, send them out. No, it's, it's the burn pit. It's chemicals and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, can we build this house with asbestos? <laughs> Let's just, can we make the boards out of asbestos? Well, and so that's the thing. But so the genetic thing, all that does is help me get screenings for specific types of cancer if I'm predisposed. Right. To just you know, to be she, like, well, we don't care unless you're actually probably going to get it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I can't just ask for yeah. the screening because my mom had just it. Check? No, no, oh, no, not in America. No. Not with our healthcare not, system. But that's the, that's the wrong podcast. Go bomb people. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> wrong podcast, <laughs> both of you. There's a little intertwined. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> So your dad did the chemo first, mm -hmm. very sick from the chemo. Yeah. I mean, brutal. Knock, knocked out. Knocked out. It, it started fine. You know, it just over yeah. two years, it really builds up. Like once they got to the preventative chemo, that was when he just had to was stop. Was that after the surgery? That was after, that was like, a, that was last he stopped it in November. Okay, so they did chemo. He they made him recoup a yep. little bit. He had gets the surgery. surgery. Then all they the do scans were good. Prevented then another him. scan that was like we're a couple spots yeah. that we you know we just get you back on this to keep him at bay. Yeah. And they did, and then that was just when like low dose, no big deal. Yeah, I mean, mean like literally. I love that. Love yeah. when they say we that. We were in Hawaii. We like dragged him out of bed to go to the beach to watch the sunset from and the chemo, from, not from yeah. the surgery. No, from the chemo. Wow. And I was. Thinking like, I kind of had this moment where I was like, I hope someone drags me to see a sunset, you know, because oh, I was like, I, yeah, we will. I was like, those I'll are things come, I generally I'll like. And like but, Sunsets? Yeah, Is that your you thing? look pretty, you know, okay. with, with drugs. Okay, but, um, I was going to say, and girls, <laughs> little, little that's help. not a sunset. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that's a strip club. But so then when we were like <laughs> walking back, sunset, yeah, so, <laughs> oh, um, so, but we were walking back to the car and he had a cane and, and, um. We go, oh, we'll pull the car up. It'll just be 30 seconds. And literally he couldn't stand for 30. He like laid down on the grass. Wow. And I just took a photo of it because <laughs> I wanted to remember like these emotions and these feelings yeah. of like, fuck, you know, this is really it. And so, watching, watching the, watching the, your ground shot the thought, hero. We yeah. were like, this was like Thanksgiving and we were like, he's not going to make it to Christmas. Yeah. And, and it was the Christmas chemo. album. Yeah, it was the chemo. And so once we, we decided. We also caught him sleepwalking a little bit, which might have been more ambient, but like we came down and like the there was like pumpkin pie and whipped cream everywhere on the counter. And my mom was like, did you do this? I was like, no, 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 I did not do that. Of course you got blamed. I, yeah, totally. You know, I, you know, so. What a great sleepwalk. You had pumpkin pie and whipped cream. Yeah, so, you didn't stab anybody. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Sorry, or my family. Out of a window. <laughs> you had dessert? I didn't really think about it. Yeah, did that's he an have awesome it so on him? Book. No, we confronted my mom. She was like, don't say anything. And then in the car ride to the airport, she was like, did you have fun with your little <laughs> sleepwalk last night? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> Yeah, because it's called sleepwalking, yeah, mom, so, mom. You know. Didn't you tell us all not to say anything? What are you doing? So, um, but you yeah, it, but then ever since then, his health has just shot up and he's gone on big hikes and like. Because he stopped the chemo. Because he stopped the chemo. Man. And so. It's, they wanted him to do it throughout the five years. Yeah. And, you know, some people in his support group have good experiences with that, but yeah. everyone reacts to it differently. Totally. And so. But also the dosage is so important. We've yeah. seen with like grandma too, the dosage is so important. Grandma's built up, right? Yeah, she, grandma was fine at first, and then she got dreadfully sick. Yeah. She was like, I'm great. I'm mm -hmm. going to the gym mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. And then chemo number her. three or four, she was so yeah. sick. And so she stopped. And he was like skipping transfusions because he had his like Hall of Fame ceremony. And he's like, I don't know, but he whacked out for this yeah. thing. So he's like, let me skip a week. And they, you know, and he has like a, I forget what it's called, like a steroid that he can take that perks him up for an hour. Mm -hmm. And Cocaine. so. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Like the good old days. <laughs> yeah, what that's so, called. I've been trying to get him to take mushrooms. How do I you thought, know he did cocaine? He just he tells you. You know what? We, he's been really <laughs> honest about that stuff. I was at I when I first started comedy, I had a I had a show that I booked a Wednesday night at a Hooters casino. And um, nice. and they would promote on my dad's show. We would give out free wings to anyone who came to the show. And um we were calling the guy for the advertising he was like advertising and his ad buy expired and this is like 11 in the morning and we call the guy up and i'm in his office with the ad people and i'm just hanging out behind him like in the corner like i don't belong here but i'm just hanging out with my dad and this guy is like answering the room at like a party like he's answering the phone and there's like all this commotion and he's like oh yeah i'll call you back in five minutes 11 in and he like called this guy like five times and finally they hang up the phone and my dad goes 
that guy reminds me of me when I did coke. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm behind him. So like everyone else in the room is like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he turns around and he's like, all right, well, you know. That and then we had a long talk about it where he was like, it when was you were expensive, a child? it was a treat, it was like different. Nowadays, it's way crazy and don't do it. And I, I was know. like, yeah. Well, I know, I mean, I don't know anyone personally, but um, I did, well, I met a guy, we were not like best friends, but he was like, tell me about a party. And he was like, he had a friend that was like, they were like waiting for fentanyl test strips for this concert. And they were like, one friend was like, just fucking do it. Let's go. And I was like, I wouldn't want to do a drug that you just have to test all the time. And- That's yeah, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah no. So wait, wait, I, hold on, hold on. Are you saying there's no quality control on this cocaine yeah, from yeah, like, that I yeah. bought from a guy yeah. sitting on the curb? Yeah. It's not oh, like it used to be. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, this has not gone through this rigorous <laughs> yeah. uh, testing? No? Okay. Well, oh, so when, I've been trying to get rid of people got testing yeah. When I was for raving, yeah. there was a company a called, yeah. um, I think it was called Dance Safe. Do you remember oh, that? No, what was it was that? after your was t- before your time and after your I bet there's an alcohol. They after the D.A.R.E. program? They would set up outside of raves and you could give them your tabs. We called them then, uh, it's like Molly yeah. now, um, but ecstasy at the time. And they would test it for heroin and speed and stuff like that because they were cutting it for sure. Mm-hmm. And I remember and like, is there when this oh, is there? Oh, oh right. Now, well, <laughs> bonus. Now that I'm thinking Two about it, one. now that I'm thinking about it, I've never really revisited this, <laughs> but I do remember having conversations with friends the next day, like like a drug connoisseur, like, well, that one was really good. It was a little more heroiny. Yeah. And we would say <laughs> heroiny. I don't like the the speedy, not so much, but like the a pinch, uh, just a dash of heroin. Not into the methy, but yeah, the yeah. heroiny. I all we would always be like, oh, that one. And I remember some of them we get and they had brown flecks and my friend dealer would be like that's that's the heroin in there and i'd be like all right how dumb how dumb am i man boy was i dumb yes. you're dumb too yeah, i'm an idiot it's like but i get it, my weed from like, the but store i get it though I, it's like eating yeah. a sandwich with little pieces of salami in it you're <laughs> like that hey this has some salami in it <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel about salami by but the there was a, a a company wow. and that's the first one i remember that would set up outside to try and mm-hmm. save kids lives that I, was before. You know, I thought I was a bad kid. <laughs> I really, I thought I, I thought I lived kind of a wild life. But I, I started comedy so young. I fell into a bonfire at sixteen. That was se- pretty 17, wild. And I fell into a bonfire. Stopped drinking. C- c- focused on comedy. Not wild. Didn't start drinking. Well, congrats on your six months now sobriety. Uh, I started January. Yeah, January first. Yeah. So four great months. Great job. I love that you're tracking me. What, why, no, why she you? told me oh, yeah. something a while ago, and I was like, I told I've been him your father. An but. Four and a half I said we'd have a drink together. Your father's not drinking this year, though, so we'll have. I one. took a year. I'm taking a year off. Good. I, I wanted to just get to a place where I had bigger muscles. Yes, uh, but also I, I, my family, like the, my genetic propensity towards drinking, is laid out like it's almost something I can't avoid. My mom, my dad, um, and. Uh, and my grandfather and and my grandma, not grandma Titus. Sure? And I just thought I wanted to have control over. That's the one that everyone says was miserably unhappy. And she hateful. was, yeah, yeah. She was hateful. The one didn't that like didn't it. drink. Everyone else, I get, I hear <laughs> described as the most fun, the party, happy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma Titus, young. asshole. Grandpa, forty-eight. Dad, fifty-eight. Grandma Titus lived in ninety-seven. So she was pissed <laughs> off the whole time. I'm not saying it was better life but because those two guys, my grandpa, my, you know, I, I knew him. We were together. I lived here for years, and I always thought the lady was dead. And finally, oh, no. I heard his aunt Kathy say <laughs> something about visiting grandma in the nursing home, and I was like. She's alive. It was presented went, to eh, me. Eh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she did, he does a bit about this, but she did supposedly have dementia for roughly 20 12, years. T- 20 years. Yeah. Nobody she had has been in the home with dementia, unable to remember only her family members <laughs> for about 20 years. <laughs> no one has. Who are you? I do a bit like I do a bit like that. I go, Grandma. We just figured out one day, Grandma Titus just said, "I'm not fucking talking to these people anymore." <laughs> Grandma, how you doing? I'm trying to finish a New York Times crossword. I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> you seem kind of lucid, Grandma. Oh, 
Mumble mumble. What's blah, a blah, blah, blah. Word no, for... She goes. No, she goes. Mumble mumble. Blah, blah, blah. Who are you? Better. <laughs> like and bitter. that's the tightest family. Bitter old lady Aww. faking Alzheimer's. And a true story about that. And I talk about it in the special. I called my aunt because I've never asked permission to tell these stories. And I call my aunt Kathy, who's her daughter. And I go, Kat, I want to do this bit about grandma, but I don't want to offend you. I love you too much. And I'm so I'm, it's the first time I've ever asked for permission. Can I do this bit? She goes, do the bit. So I do the bit for for Kathy. And Kathy goes. That sounds about right, <laughs> which makes me laugh Tiredly. every time. <laughs> so, so you take this picture of your dad, yeah, lying down mm -hmm. because you wanted to remember. You thought he was dying. We, I was sure. I had a bunch of shows booked until like the 18th. I was like, I just got to make it to the 18th before I get a call. Like, hey, your dad passed, and I like then you, you didn't like cancel go up the on shows. a show. Yeah, and so well, I, I'm sorry. Hold on, say that last line again. Wait, what? Until I get a call, hey, your dad passed, and then I got to go up on the show. Yeah. I love oh that you're like, you're like, don't die before the 18th. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> Listen, please. I need a couple of weeks off. I can't afford to cancel my shows, you know? Like, I, and you would still go on stage. I that advertising money. Uh, you know, we got some stuff invested into okay. it. Edom Claw needs me, okay? okay. And, um, Edom Claw. Edom Claw. That's I work a, Appleton. You, you are big. I got a gig in Appleton, in Edom Dad. Claw. <laughs> yeah, hang, hang tough. I sold 150 tickets in that theater, so, you awesome. know, we're doing good. Killing it. Um, but maybe don't say killer. Sorry, you're Thank right. you. Yeah. Um, I'm really doing well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and but then everything improved. And then Christmas is when we got the family together and my dad fell at the airport and did his little witty, witty re remark. And then my friend actually has this great bit about how he's the assistant manager of his family. And my dad loved that one because it wasn't one of mine, but um, <laughs> it was like he related to it, you know, but my dad was like, he had the authority of like a McDonald's cashier. So <laughs> he's like, if you need a bathroom key, I can help you. But, but then we're like wheeling him out of the airport. My dad is like, he's like on the plane trying to grab stuff from the, after he just fell, and I'm like, you, you, can you not scar me for life twice in the yeah. same day? But he's like doing a one-handed, <laughs> one-legged trying to grab something because he's in the window seat. Yeah. And I'm like, just wait for everyone to get out. And he goes, you're not the boss of me. Oh, he like yelled at me. Oh. I go, you're not even the boss of your own feet. <laughs> I got nice. Him, I know? like that. The argument's funny. Yeah. I and, like then, and then I got the sick <laughs> cancer patient. Yeah. I showed him. Yeah. I showed him. Yeah. And then as we're wheeling him out, he goes, I'm the assistant manager of my feet. And I go, oh, fuck. He's really good. You did a callback. Yeah, it's really funny. You <laughs> know? It's so. Um, yeah. that's what we, remember that too, people when like someone's uh, when this happens because this was with mom that me getting that giving the thing about sugar is like taking her dignity away was like if I want to have sugar she's she used to trick stuff she, oh, we assistant Ryan uh, I had to take her up one time she, she made him take her to Chick-fil-A we found out later yeah she was like no don't tell anybody <laughs> he's like I don't know if I don't uh, let me call Ray. Don't call Ray. I think like <laughs> part of why my it's grandma like a drug deal. Chick Fil A <laughs> test this fentanyl. No, 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 don't test, don't test, don't test. Although I get it with Chick Fil A chicken, and I, I know I it's it. anti gay and anti everything, and maybe a guy that the owned one in so Michigan good. just <laughs> drove to North Carolina to rape a twelve year old. I know, I get it, but the chicken. Have you so have good. you tried Ooh. this? Oh Is that how like Chipotle advertises? Rape right free, you know. <laughs> oh. like, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly but but give people their it dignity was, that's what it that's why grandma wanted me to come out because that was so important to me with mom to give her autonomy to still allow her to be her own person what i found a lot and doctors are very aware of this in cancer settings is not letting the caregivers or the family talk over the patient you'll see doctors a lot as family starts to talk they'll go uh-huh and what was that? You know, because they're so used to that. And so I really learned with her, let her, if she asked me, then I would tell what I knew she wanted right. me to, because she had brain fog from chemo, but letting them have dignity, dignity, letting them still make choices. It's hard. My mom hated that. I saw her weak. My mm -hmm. mom hated, she said to me one time, it's almost like you've become the parent. And I was like, no, mom, you know, like, no. But guys, that's coming for all of us. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. Except for me. <laughs> Both my parents, gone. Oh. Woo!
And gra- no, so- grandma's still alive. <laughs> she's she's still in the thirty five years. <laughs> she faked her death. She, she never has a funeral. She runs a crime family in Tucson now. It's a handwritten <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> obituary. Grandma, that's your handwriting. Why'd you cut out magazine clippings? And <laughs> it only went to the family. She's a Highlander. She just keeps going. Um, but 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 give. Uh, that's what I learned with mom is that you have to give. You, you know, your dad. I get it. Totally get it. You know, you're you're his kid. He mm-hmm. wiped your ass. He mm-hmm. carried you around. Now you're like, Dad, let me handle yeah. it. He's like, Shut the fuck right, up. Right, right. As my dad was like that too. I got this. Yeah. Dad, you've had four heart attacks. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you say? He goes, he goes, he, goes, he, he said she would I say should she, know how to handle them by now. Yeah, yeah. He, he would say shit like that. He's like, I cut back to a pa- one pack a day. Like he, he, and I'm like, you're not funny. Yeah. It's not funny at all. I'm gonna lose my dad. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You'll be fine. My mom had been like she was nearly non-communicative at this stage at the end, and uh because the your liver like ammonia releases in your brain and so you, yeah. they get very confused as as they're dying and so her two art lady friends who taught an art class that she went to out here came to sit with her and one of them was named Joan and mom is on this chaise lounge like laid back like this and not talking not really able to talk anymore and i'm sitting right there and joan says to my mom i'm gonna miss our weekly cheeseburger outings and my mom literally goes (laughs) at me opens one (laughs) eye and then closes her eyes again she knew she was still in there and she was like damn it joan those are the moments too like when my dad wisecracked the thing and i was like it's still him totally in there no matter what yeah totally and that was a huge relief for me because i thought like oh i'm gonna lose even just talking to him but you also get how that's tough to say man you also get that as caregivers sometimes not she doesn't but i mean i think the first time this happens you start to treat the person like a child yeah and they're fucking not and they're mad about it they're yeah, fu- yeah <laughs> as they will should yeah. be don't talk down to me you know sure i shit myself yeah. but it's not because of me i knew that i, I didn't want to shit I myself yeah, 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 yeah. yeah i did it on purpose yeah. <laughs> that's why i say at the beginning of my show caregiving it's where you dedicate your whole life to save someone else's life mm-hmm. so aggressively they wish you would die <laughs> Yes. And that's what it is. <laughs> yep. You have to be so careful. They're still in there. They mm-hmm. just can't get the words out as quickly yeah. or through that fog as well. Yeah. But they're in their brain thinking, this asshole. Yeah. Like your dad. Sure, was well, still- mom actually got with, 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 with once with what's his face came in. Mom had the mom was in oh, there yeah. and she was like, <laughs> My sister's now ex husband. Except what's she saying again? Who my mom had always disliked and it had been a family thing for 20 something years. My mom thought my sister deserved better and she did. It had been a rift in the and family. And my actually. mom, this was even later than the cheeseburger. So she is now fully in the hospital bed. She is on oxygen. She is, I think, she's n- no longer eating or or having fluids like we're anymore. gathering she's, around yeah like it's getting there and my sisters uh walks in with her husband who my mom could not stand and my mom couldn't even form words anymore but she opened one eye and she went <gasps> and looked surprised and she goes that idiot <laughs> and then closes her and my brother and I were like instantly like he <laughs> and my sister gets so mad. She's divorced him since then. So we were right. But my brother yeah, and I are right. laughing hysterically. My brother's texting me across mom. My sister's trying to read the text and she finally looks at both of us and goes, she didn't say that idiot. And we were like, <laughs> no uh, we but, never said. Nobody <laughs> said anything. Why would you say that? Because none of us said that. Yeah. So so just remember people that uh, I think you're I think you're right. It's, uh, if we can take anything from this podcast is that you it's it's so impo- it's impossible mm-hmm. the death is impossible there's no right way to die or the you no know. and you don't know what to and, and if you're a caregiver if you, it's your dad you don't mm-hmm. know this is the dude that carried you this right. is my, my father was the baddest motherfucker i ever knew mm-hmm. yeah. um i mean used to get out of his cars you know what talk about road rage my dad my dad invented it <laughs> my father invented getting out of the car and punching another car my dad punched other cars he didn't punch the guy because the guy <laughs> well, had he window did up. punch a guy i thought oh he punched a guy well and i was in the 64 uh, impala when i was a little kid 
he pun- I was I remember standing on the back seat and watching it. And he, no, 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 no. We got out. I told I told this story in one of my specials. You did. We got out. Yes. You don't watch his specials though. No. So. I told this. Yeah. Neither, <laughs> neither, neither, long. By the way, it's neither one of you guys have ever seen me do We're comedy. We're the sixty second or last yeah. generation. Yeah. Yeah. Is this on so, TikTok yet? Yeah. So I'm in the car. We're driving. And my dad was in a three piece suit, vest, everything. Guy, this kid in the sixty four Impala is honking at him, flipping him off. So we pull up through these train tracks. We cross the train tracks, and my dad stops. So the guy has to park on the train tracks. And he, and he goes, and he, and he goes, stay in the car, gets out, walks back. And I, I stand up on the seat and I'm watching. My dad just walks up this kid. And as I, as, I, and now my father was six, four, uh, six, three. And as he walks up, the kid has his window down. And I know my dad, and I'm a, I'm still I'm thinking I'm, I, I've got to be eight or nine. I'm like no 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 See, no back no, then no, you no, 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 no. roll it up. I'm That's like, a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he just and the guy's going fuck, and he's leaning out the window going fuck, and my dad just goes. Wham! Never and I got it out. I see, huh? He never got the whole word out. No, he didn't get it. No, he didn't finish this, whatever he was saying. And he just goes like this. Whomp, and he didn't come back up. It was just dashboard and steering wheel. The kid never, my dad So walked, you drove off and left him on the train dad track. My walked to the car. <laughs> this is a murder and drove story. Away. Well, <laughs> statue limitations. Yeah, yeah, yeah there my dad's no statue plus he's murder. Dead. Plus he's dead. But there's so no. My dad's gone. Um, so, okay. so, but that's it. You're an accessory. There's it's another. Fine. You're an accessory. <laughs> with Grandma Tidy. Let me start together. Oh my God. This is a true crime podcast. <laughs> so, and so I, my dad was that guy, wake, wake so, uh, water skiing. We'd all be water skiing thinking we were badasses and he would do it once a year he would get behind the boat and this is in his 40s and 50s uh, i think the last time he did maybe he's 48 got up and he would just shred i mean just single just ski single ski a shoulder in the water whip across and then he'd be sore he couldn't oh, get yeah. out of bed for three days because yeah. he never worked out but he was a badass and and when that and your dad same way funny sharp as shit and mom the brilliance and when you see that brilliance start to fade because of whatever happens, there is, I call it the impossible. It's the impossible. You don't, there's no context for it. So talk about it. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. And and know that the person that you that you think is not there anymore is still there. Is still there. And don't baby them because you're pissing them off. Right. <laughs> you're really, yeah. don't, I don't want to, I don't want to die pissed off because I know what's going to happen. You guys, are you okay? I'll be fine. Yeah. 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 It's hard too to see them broken by it. Yes. You know, once my mom realized and it got so bad and it was very protracted and very awful. And there was a point in the hospital where she, you no, know, everyone left the room and I'll never forget this until the day I die. She said in my ear, it's not fair, Ray Ray. It's not fair. And you want to say, no, no, it's okay. Everything's okay. And there's something about just acknowledging, yeah, I this know. is really messed up. Yep. It, and it and it was what happened to her and how it happened. But also know? the relief for them on that side when you when you when they're yeah. like, this is the shittiest thing ever. Yeah. And I'm Sometimes right here. Don't I'm, try and fix it. You, there you go. You just perfect. That's what I want. That's it. That, perfect. Don't try to fix it. Exactly. Because <laughs> uh, you can't. Yeah. Because you can't, and then they get frustrated that you're trying. You're like, just acknowledge it. That it sucks. Oh, this sucks. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I've been saying. <laughs> she, he doesn't listen to you either. No, so he doesn't it's, watch it's my special. Yeah, yeah, he's like comedy block cancer. <laughs> no, I always have ever seen any of us do comedy. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. I assume you guys are pretty good. I always come after you get off stage and go, "You good job." Good and job. Then, I don't yeah, remember. I don't you took all my I heard notes. You laughed the first time, and then that was all. <laughs> he does stand in the back. Yeah. You'll hear at the very beginning of your set. <laughs> and then never again. And sometimes I'll be in my head like, did he just go back in the green room? Or yeah. for my show. is yeah. he not I laughing There was one time anymore? at the at Irvine open for you. And he was in the front row with just a glass oh, of wine. No. Going, and I was like, oh my God. Oh no. And it was a little dirty for Grandma Jean, I think. Or who was... Uh, Mama Jean, Grandma Jean, oh, Grandma Jean. That okay. was no. You were dirty on the podcast. Oh really? Oh, okay, I thought she, she said was my show here. was too dirty. She was here. Yeah. And w- the podcast was upstairs before we did video. And you, you said okay, back a lot. okay. She yeah. was in her eighties. That's fair. For the love of God, I can handle it. Then she got cancer. And <laughs> Good job. <laughs> this is my fault. <laughs> I Guys, caused that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Andrew Rivers, who has a new special coming out on YouTube yep. in June. On June eleventh. Eleventh. Andrew J. Rivers on YouTube. He's way funnier than you saw today. Just oh. go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love we Andrew just don't Rivers. Stop. We just don't stop. None None of these bits are in the new special, so you're not. I had like to have that. him on. Yeah. I was going to say just to see when he said, "I'm doing cancer material." <laughs> 
was like, why don't you I come over and idea. do some yeah, of that yeah. for me before? Tell your dad I, we send our love. But dude, t- t- I, I want to send him here to do a podcast with you because he was thinking oh, about coming out because he's like, you're going to hang with Titus. And I did a show with Craig Ferguson too. And so he was like, maybe I'll come. I, I've interviewed Craig. Maybe we'll sit down. We'll, but then he gets. If he can get out here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll come out when he's yeah. feeling You good. did Craig Ferguson's podcast. Yeah. How did that happen? Is, well, okay, I'm, guys. Thank you for yeah, tuning yeah. in. Knock him dead podcast. Andrew J. Rivers. Go check out his YouTube channel. New special coming out later. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you. (laughs) 